Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave. It's Gem here and I have for you the November scroller box. I'm going to be doing the scroller challenge in the same video so we're a bit out of our normal format but I know that will really please some of you so let's just get stuck into this. After getting the cryptic email about the contents of this box not being broken, mine has arrived with the tape burst and this poking out. And I'm assuming that this is what they're talking about that uh, that isn't broken, which we shall look at in slightly more detail in just a second. Whatever it is is in here is stuffed in because it's kind of bulging at the seams. So this is a, a Van Gogh selected filament. Oh, it's a travel paintbrush. Oh, look. I don't know what this is for, but I'm sure we'll uh, I'm sure we'll find out in due course. As per usual with Scroller Box, it is the UK's only subscription box, and there are certain things that we always get. One is an artwork by a featured artist, obviously done in paint by the looks of things. Please be watercolours, please be watercolours. Riso Chan is the artist based in Amsterdam, and they are also a teacher, so also have an Instagram account which is listed down here. I'm curious as to know what the prompt is going to be. It's kind of difficult to tell with these sort of character type drawings. One of the other things we always get is paper as well. Yes, it looks like watercolour paper, unsurprisingly. Nice texture to it. Quite an even texture. The standard pencil, we have got a Lyra 3B. I love a 3B. This is a Robinson pencil and feels feels like a good quality pencil. Doesn't feel kind of like hollow or cheap. So that's good. We've already talked about the paintbrush, which by the way is a number six round. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Other standard fare is our scroller box sticker, which is very pretty this month. Oh, they like those colours very much. We usually get a sweet looks like a lemon bonbon boiled sweet type effort and a list of the supplies in the box which also has the prompt on it but I like to look at them afterwards. Uh, a, a cum eraser, uh, this feels quite rigid, quite sturdy so this is obviously to go with our pencil. And last but not least, oh how cute is this, aquafine gouache and is a colour selection exclusive to scroller box. I have recently found out about gouache and used it and I really like it as a medium. But I haven't tried these ones, it was Winsor & Newton ones I tried, so let's have a wee look at the colour selection. I love the fact that this has come in this little box as well, this is real nice. This is the first time I've had gouache in a scroller box, I don't know whether it's the first time they've done it. Oh, come out. <laughs> this one's stuck. At least they're nice and secure in the box, that's good to know. Oh, come out. <laughs> Oh, jeez. So we have got ivory black, cobalt blue hue, portrait pink, titanium white, cadmium yellow deep hue, alizarin crimson. So the good news is that we've got the primary colours, which is delightful. That is a really nice well-rounded set of colours. When you are going to give someone a selection of colours, this is, as far as I'm concerned, is all you can ask for. What more could you possibly want? You can mix skin tones, but it makes things a lot easier if you've got a base to work from. I am super excited about this. The contents. Okay, so let's see what it says about the gouache first of all. And I, this colour pack is an ideal introduction to Aquafine gouache. As I just said, it's a great selection of colours to have. Modern high quality pigments. It's interesting the way that they word this. These paints combine a modern way of using watercolour with the traditional essentials that come with using this medium, which makes this innovative range ideal for mixed media as well as traditional techniques. That's one of the things I absolutely loved when I tried gouache for the first time. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, uh, the first one anyway, I'm going to link it in the end card. There is a series of videos I did in gouache, so you can check them out if you're that way inclined, if you're new to the medium. The ability to water them right down to watercolour consistency but also keep them thick and get some texture and stuff in them is something that I loved about them and I could not believe how opaque they were when they were in their neat form or only very slightly diluted with water. The paintbrush, the fine tip makes it great for controlled detail. Agreed. It doesn't actually say anything about the other end, although you can see in the image it does have this weird like dinkle cut out. It's not, it isn't broken at all. I'm assuming that's to make sort of texture and lines within the gouache. That would be my thinking. I don't know how much I would actually use it though. Pencil, uh, I think they should just have like a standard spiel for pencils. 
because obviously it's going to be high quality because everything that comes in these boxes is supposed to be high quality. Recommended retail price, 30 pence. That's what I'm talking about. That's my kind of pencil. Okay, the eraser is a, a natural eraser. High grade material that they don't specify that is soft and gentle, ensuring there is no unnecessary straining to your paper. Oh my God. <laughs> these get better. It's extremely versatile and can be used in a variety of different surfaces such as paper, cardboard and wood. Most erasers do that, guys. The eraser is made from natural materials, but they don't actually tell you what kind of materials. But it's free of PVC, latex and phthalates. The paper, we're on Bockingford paper. I've tried this paper before. It is nice paper. It is good paper and I like it. It has an attractive surface. It does. It really does. I, I agree. It's created using natural wool and felts which gives the paper a beautifully textured finish that is stable. Now, I did say that it seemed very consistent uh, and with excellent colour lifting abilities. Well, we'll definitely be trying that out. There is no doubt about that. So the scroller challenge is face of emotion. Ugh, faces. Oh, that's me stuffed, guys. Faces. It doesn't have to be a human face, though. There'll be no human faces in this scroller challenge. I can promise you that right now. Okay, dokie, I'm really excited to get started. So I want to swatch some of these out. I'm just going to grab some water and some bits and pieces, get a palette together and stuff, and we can have a go with some of these. Alrighty ho, so I have got some cheap scraps of watercolour paper here and uh, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of the thicknesses and dilutions of gouache. Also get a wee chance to swatch out the colours which will be nice as well. So I'm going to squeeze some of the neat pigment into this palette. Wow, we okay, we're excited off the mark. That's loads. A little of this goes a long, long, long way. So we don't, oh, I've made a mess already. You really don't need to um, to go crazy when you're actually putting out, unless you're doing a massive artwork. So you can see these colours do look really rich in the palette. They aren't quite pigmented, they look quite nice. I only have the Winsor & Newton gouache to go against, but it is pretty good quality, so, you know. So straight away you can see the consistency of it, it holds its shape really well and it's because it's really thick. So we'll zoom in a little bit and I will show you this on the paper. Okay, so if I take some of this skin tone and you can see the consistency there as I'm lifting it up, it is super thick. So there you go, in its raw form. That's the kind of colour and consistency you're looking at and you can leave textured brush strokes because it is that thick. The good thing about gouache though, it is really water soluble so you have no issue cleaning your brush in between what's going on. Straight away, I hate this paintbrush. It's really cheap and nasty. It's moving, when I'm swirling about in the water to clean it, the end where you've flipped it over, you know, to put it together, I can feel it moving about in there. And that just, I don't, I don't like that at all. I'm not a fan of the paintbrush already. The bristles, however, seem to be really good. I really like them. Okay, so if we add a little bit of water to this, so I'm just going to put some water in here so that I can work from it. I really like this palette. Even if we just put a couple of splodges and give that a mix in, you can see how much that is diluting in that straight away. So with a little bit of water, what it does is it gives you more mobility, but you've still got quite a lot of the opacity, which is a really nice place to be. If you water it down even further, you start to get into sort of watercolour territory and it gives you this nice sort of loose wash effect. So you can actually water this down and treat it and use it exactly as you would normal traditional watercolour but you have the advantage of it having this almost like acrylic type property so you've got a whole spectrum of dilutions that you could work with i think at one point when i did one of my gouache videos i had like five different dilutions of exactly the same colour this also lends itself very much to paint mixing as well and i'm going to use the white for this just because it's a colour that's not going to show up in a swatch on the paper anyway but if i start mixing this in and you can see it's sticking to the brush and it's just because of the consistency of the paint and that gives you quite a lot of control and let's just put this out. So these paints are mixing really well together and obviously you have a, a myriad of options when you have that ability to mix. And not only that, the addition of the fact that this is this has given us the primary colours as well. So even I can water down that mixture as well. So I can have 
a really wishy-washy version of my mixed paint as well so it is super super versatile and we'll go next with the blue and we can add a wee splodge of water to it there we go that's just two drops of water so there you are that's a, that's a slight dilution there we go super goopy I would say though if you're wanting to add texture and really build up layers this particular paintbrush isn't great for it because it is quite soft you're better with a, a, a stiffer bristled brush if you're wanting to get texture in because that's what's going to leave the, the, the paint strokes in the actual paint whereas this is just given under the weight of the the gouache. I'm sure you could utilise the, the tool on the other end of the brush if you wanted to do that though. Off the top of my head, I can't really see whether it's any worse quality or any better quality than the Winsor & Newton ones, to be honest. And you can layer this in the same way that you would layer watercolour as well, once the layer underneath is dry. The other thing I'm going to try as well is the thirsty brush technique. So just a damp, clean brush, and I want to see how this is going to lift. And there you go, you can see that that has taken off some of that paint quite nicely so in its watered down form you can lift it again the same as you would watercolour which is going to work quite well because it was actually mentioned about the characteristics of the paper that we've been provided with as well. I always say this stage when you just add a tiny bit of water to it I call it the mobilisation stage because it still has that opacity of gouache but it's easier to manoeuvre it and move it around your paper. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's about as dark as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, this paintbrush is annoying me though. It's bugging me already. And it's a shame because there's nothing wrong with the bristles. Obviously it has to be hollow so that it, it can fit back inside. But even at that, it just feels really cheap and nasty. I've got better, much nicer travel brushes than this with a similar quality of bristles. So there you go. You can see that that's flowing over the paper much easier. It's not as globby. And that's just one or two drops of water. And then if we really get into it, and you can do wonderful things with, with diluted black paint and it's actually one of my favourite things to work with. Because I'm going to go ham with this and I'm going to like flood it. And just pick like right from the edge. I love this. And I, I, I very much enjoy working in, in monochromatic palettes, so particularly with black just because it's fun. There we go. So that is a sort of brief overview of gouache. I am delighted with this scroller box. Absolutely delighted. Right, let's get some sketching done. See if we can do this prompt. Ooh. Okay, so our prompt is face of emotion. The first thing that springs to mind is my, well, one of my dogs and he has a very expressive face. I would like multiple expressions. So maybe we could do like, um like a cartoon strip, you know, going from like a, a really, like a really alert face, maybe like ears back, looking down, and then maybe like a, a front face and, you know, the, 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 the puppy eyes with the whites of the eyes. But that's not really tickling me at all. I do think I want multiple expressions. Another animal that's really, really expressive are all the primates. Obviously they're closely related to humans. So maybe we could do, oh I know, we're going to have an orangutan because they've got great facial expressions. They do this kind of like kissy pouty face, you know, where their lips are all like mm, squished out. They've got really big round, especially when they're babies, they've got really big round expressive eyes because we could do it. That looks like a duck. <laughs> and then we could have like that aggressive face that they do when they show all their gums and their teeth. I don't really want, I don't know if I want three. Oh, we could have, right, okay, I think I've got it. And I'm thinking as well, we could have like leaves in the background, but have them like all the way over the page. And again, that would let us use some of the texture of the gouache and we could have some really light watercolor ones. So we'd have like a, almost like a through, quite a three quarter view that way. And then we could have the middle one face on. And then this one could be facing this way. Yeah, well, I definitely, I think I'm going to fly with this idea, but I need to work on these facial expressions. <laughs> I just love them. I think if we maybe change the angle of the eyes slightly, because I don't really want them to look sad. I like, I like my art to be happy. 
So maybe if we change these eyelids a little bit just to kind of like more across the way rather than that slant. Now see now he just looks cheesed off. <laughs> and then obviously they've got this they've got this kind of pale part here around the, where their eye sockets are. And yeah, this one I kind of want to I want to like tilt his head back a little bit because I, I want to give a bit of variation. I just want to try this lip just now I'll mess about with the eyes in a minute. It just looks as if he's got his mouth wide open. I think this needs to be closed off a bit more. I'm gonna try these lips again. I think when we're doing the, the mouth part here, I'm gonna to have to be very particular about my shading because I think that's gonna make the difference between it looking right and looking nightmarish. <laughs> yeah, so we could do eyes up with this one, eyes down with this one, and then he's ooh face. <laughs> Okay, I think that's enough sketching, so I'm going to go and grab the paper and we can get going. I need to get these lines right first time. So that's roughly where his mouth is going to be. Deciding this down here. That needs to come down at more of an angle. I have to decide on his nostril shape as well because it's something I have noticed the more pictures that I look at of of these little o-rings their, their, their nose shapes are all quite different as well I'm going to bring this pink area down and I'll, I'll almost join it up I think with with his face oh look he looks cute already I'm going to put his eyes quite close to his nose. <laughs> oh jeez. Obviously I'll need to put them in and, and paint because all these lines are going to be obliterated. All this lovely sketching that I'm doing is just going to be obliterated the minute I start painting but that's kind of okay. That's kind of a plan. And these lines are just getting darker and darker and darker. <laughs> oh. I just have to get this lip shape correct in my mind and that's why I'm spending so much time on the sketch. This eye is also not right. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the, the leaves. Okay, this has just happened. Don't hold it by the top half if you're wiggling about in the water. This is kind of dried up. You can reconstitute these, no problem, just add a bit of water to them. So I want a really watery kind of pale green and then I want a kind of stronger, darker green just so that I can have a little bit of variation. I wonder what happens if we just plonk this all in together. Oh wow, <laughs> it's going on over here. Oh there we go, there's my dark green. <laughs> Yep, I'm good with that, so I'm just going to water that down. In fact, I'm just going to plonk some in here, some water in here. Plonk that in there. Okay, so let's try and get some leaves in. So I'm going to go with this kind of waterier version to begin with. Okay, I've only put a little bit of water on the paper and it is starting to buckle. I'm maybe too late to tape this down, but we'll try anyway. This is like epic already and... Th this is like one of the reasons why I don't like to do the the scroller challenge at the same time as I do the unboxing because I am quite limited for time generally and I just feel as if I'm rushing everything and I feel as if this is, you know, it's taken forever. Right, so I've just taken this pink here and a tiny, tiny hint of really diluted yellow. Just want to start adding a bit of, a bit more pink here. I'm going to use this on his muzzle. One of the things with gouache is you have to wait until it's dry to see what colour it's actually going to be. I've got a bit of a razor shaving in there. And it's something I have to keep reminding myself about when I go to use gouache. I'm going to mix a bit of this skin tone and this yellow together. I'm trying at this point to just not be scared of this paint because it is quite vibrant and I tend to work in really like muted shades so 
I am trying not to be scared of the paint. Okay, I think our leaves are dry, so I'm just going to go and add in some more of these now. Get out of the way. I've just decided I'm going to bring this orangey colour right up round because if there's any parts where the the skin is poking through the hair, which there will be, it means I'm not going to have the white of the paper underneath. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier, but I'm glad that I did. Okay, so now we need to make up a brown colour. So I want a kind of reddish brown for the hair. <laughs> And I think that's that's a pretty good orangutan colour that I've got going on here. Well, that was a wayward hair, that one. Now I'm really thinking about starting to put in some contours and stuff now. Just want to try and add some shading and some a wee bit more expression into the expressions, if that makes sense. Um, back to this sort of pink and yellow combination now. Just add some of this in round here. Make him look a bit happier with himself. <laughs> Just trying to get a bit of depth in their hair there, like, like anybody or anything else, the hair's never really all one colour. So I wanted to make up like a more kind of chocolatey brown, just to get some more hair in there. I have to say for a little travel brush, this does hold quite a lot of paint. And there's going to be quite a bit of shadow under there. And I'm just going to keep working away on everything else. That, those lips will probably be the last thing that I do, maybe apart from the black that I'm going to use in the eyes. And then we'll kind of want some of this down here as well, under his nose. Now I'm going to throw caution to the wind here. Uh, this is never a good idea, but... And I'm going to use the, the, the neat pink out the tube. I've got a tiny little bit here that I haven't mixed in with anything. And I'm going to use that in these sections round his eyes. It looks really dark and I'm beginning to wonder if this one I had originally whether I'd put a little bit of white in it or not so I might have to I might have to do something with this. Yeah that's definitely lighter even as it's drying it's not drying that much lighter. I'll just go back over that right now. Whee. There we go. <laughs> Job sorted. So just working with what I've got left here this is like really 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 dried up. I want to make an almost black kind of brown. I don't want to use, the only place I want to use neat black is on the eyes. Okay let's just see how precise this can actually be. That's pretty good. <laughs> this is really just to give myself an indication for the the eyes. It looks more like war paint. Maybe I shouldn't have been too heavy with that but I'm gonna pull out some of this white, mix it in here. And I'm actually not, I've deliberately not mixed this paint completely because I quite like the, the little bit of variation that it's going to give us. And this is kind of like the fun part of gouache. Okay, I'm going to have to tackle his lips now. This is, <laughs> this is where it's going to get interesting. And then we want some of this down here as well. Oh, that's, there's, that is so pigmented, it's just ridiculous. I'll just let that bleed out into that. That would be a as good a move as any. I want this to be really subtle. I don't want these to be massive. It is a bit more difficult when the gouache is quite concentrated. It can be quite difficult to get to get it to move, to get it to do anything. Ah, oh, damn it! Oh well, we're putting a flower in up there now. <laughs> 
going to have to finish that off and I take the tape off. Jock, one of my colleges, colleagues is nudging my right arm just now and it's driving me insane. He just, he just wants a little bit of attention. He's not normally an attention-seeking dog, but he's obviously just want, <laughs> wanting a pet. So I, I'm trying to stroke him with my right hand while I'm doing this. This is very reminiscent of the old... Uh, the oil paints that we had, I remember doing exactly the same thing with oil paints. Same colours and everything. I know I can go over this with white gouache, which is what I'm going to do, but wait, I'm happy where I've got the highlights in, so I just want to try and paint round them so that I don't lose them. Because if you get your highlights in the wrong place, it can make your, your well, anything look cross-eyed. And I definitely don't want that. I remember a long time ago as well, but I'm sure some of you would probably have seen this. There was a lady, and I think she was in Indiana, in the States, and she was a, a burns victim, and she went to the zoo with her partner, and it was just to kind of take her mind off, because she had, like she was all, like, her shoulders and everything all had dressings on them. And this orangutan was fascinated by the fact that she had these dressings on, and he came over to see her and was asking her through the glass to take them off because he wanted to see what was underneath. It was it was very, very interesting. I've kind of lost my curve here a wee bit. I'm trying to fix this without... without ruining it. He <laughs> looks suitably pissed. <laughs> this paintbrush is driving me crazy. Do you know what I've just thought of? This this isn't the same orangutan. This is a set of triplets. Ah! How cute is that? That that's a much cuter idea. I just want to pick up some of this weird orangey colour again. And I just want to put a little bit of this around here. I'm really glad I taped this down. For what is supposed to be low tack tape, this is supposed to be washi tape, we're not doing very well. It has actually lifted the paper as well, it's torn the paper but never mind. And there we go, there is my finished piece for the November scroller box. I would love to hear how you've got on with your scroller box, what you think of the contents, and uh, if you've got any comments on the artwork or the video, you know I always welcome them and I look forward to reading them. So I hope you have a good day today and have a good upcoming weekend as well. And we'll see you back in the cave on Sunday for the fourth video this week. Thanks very much for watching guys and we will see you next time. Bye for now.